Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Warzone may only have been here a short time, but there are already numerous ways to gain the edge in battle and hopefully bring home more Warzone victories. And as this game involves crossplay, it's important to gain any and every edge in battle we can, especially if you're a dirty casual like me, but you still want to be competitive. These tips are designed for controller players and those playing on console, but unsurprisingly, all this works on PC too. So if you're ready, here's 15 secrets and settings to gain the edge in Call of Duty Warzone. Let's start with controller tips and tricks. As a default setting, we must hold down square on PS4 and X on Xbox to pick up any weapon. This is not good enough. This slows us down and can make the first weapon you find impossible to pick up in time. By the time you've held the button down long enough, your momentum has gone too. You become a sitting duck. Therefore, the first setting you should change in your menus right away is this. Go down to weapons and change use slash reload behavior to contextual tap. This will make things like opening crates and picking up weapons and replacing weapons all a single button press. You will now loot quicker and be on the move more often. Oh, and this carries over to vehicles too. Get in them instantly. It's imperative when you're escaping the gas or another team's ambush. So do yourself and your team a favor and switch to contextual tap. Next, by default, our character is set to run after pressing on the left thumbstick. This is fine and all, but once again, the additional time it takes to press that down can be streamlined in your settings. So jump back into controller settings and down to movement automatic sprint. Here we have three options. It's disabled by default, there's auto sprint, and the one I suggest is auto tactical sprint. Although the difference between tactical sprint and standard sprint is negligible at this early point. But definitely, auto run is a godsend, so please use it. Our next setting is film grain. Film grain is here to make the game look more cinematic, as if it was filmed on exactly that, real film for a cinema. This adds a filter over the image. It's automatically set quite low and does a great job of hiding the lack of textures in some areas when you're moving around the map. So by turning this off, your game will look a little less atmospheric and you'll notice things like anti-aliasing a little bit more, but what you lose in visual film-like aesthetic, you will make up in visibility. Buildings are easier to maneuver around and spotting enemies at all distances is another step easier. The film grain is a form of post-processing, which actually causes a minute delay on your screen. So turn off all post-processing to gain the edge. Which brings me to my next point, motion blur. Just like film grain, motion blur is here to make things look more cinematic, more movie-like, and to hide a few unsightly issues. Here's my advice, jump into your settings and under general and accessibility is world motion blur and weapon motion blur. Your game is most definitely going to look worse, but here's a thing to remember. Have you ever watched a professional PC player? More often than not, the game actually looks better on console. But why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. The pro always turns off everything which doesn't benefit them or distracts them. They turn off shadows. They turn off high quality lighting. They turn off motion blur. They want the bare bones of the game with no post-production or visual effects that don't help them. So let us take a page out of their book and turn off our motion blur. The game will actually run a little smoother on console now, and when quickly turning and aiming, your target acquisition will be improved greatly. Okay, so that was a little technical. Let's find another way to get an advantage. Here's a great simple one. We can change our HUD options. As a default, we have a circular minimap. This is integral to knowing the enemy locations. Well, in general settings, this can be switched to a square shape instead, and it so happens to be far bigger. And right now, bigger is better, especially for this. Bigger surface area, more information on screen. Therefore, the trade-off is you will lose a little bit of your peripheral vision, but it's definitely worth it. So switch to square when you get the chance. Also, here's one which doesn't suit everyone. The minimap can be locked in place. It won't rotate around. If you're a player or in a team who uses north, south, east, west calls, this screen when locked in place is perfect, making north always up on the screen, east always right, south down, and west left. Like I said, it's not for everyone, but if you use those callouts, this is a good change. Our next setting is actually three steps, and it's all about the crouch button. When you first play the game, this movement is set to be held, meaning we have to keep our thumb down for longer. We've already established why we don't like to hold buttons down. It's too time consuming, and this will get you killed in the battlefield. So under controller settings, go down to movement and select slide behavior. Change this to tap. Now you become John Wick. One button, epic slides. Let's go further into this. Do you use a standard controller? If so, a change I recommend will improve your aim drastically. In controller button layout presets, change default to tactical. 
The change is tiny, so here's the theory. Your crouch button is now located on your right thumbstick, meaning every time you use crouch or slide, your thumb will remain on the stick. This means you can aim whilst crouching and sliding. Corner slides become instinctive, and sliding in general becomes a huge part of the way you maneuver around the map. On a negative side, your melee button is now located on circle, or B on an Xbox, I think. You may now lose punch fights, but let's be honest, what do you use more, crouch or melee? I'm gonna guess you use crouch. By the way, PlayStation gamers, I'm currently reviewing the PS4 back buttons, which are a super cheap alternative to a full-blown scuff controller. So far, it's, a, it's quite an impressive piece of kit, allowing two paddles to be set underneath. In Call of Duty games, scuff and other paddle-based systems have a huge advantage over us as they can jump and shoot in the same motion. But a normal human being will struggle to do this with a standard controller, unless you play claw, of course. But I won't go into why you shouldn't play claw. So now we can change this to mimic the sliding function we had earlier. The paddles underneath can now be used for any button at all, whichever you want, which means your fingers underneath the controller are doing the work and not your thumbs coming off the thumbsticks. So yeah, these things are awesome. I also recommend the Strike Pack, which is on PS4 and Xbox, if you don't want to spend too much, but you want to experience paddle-based gaming. Anyway, I'll try and review these as soon as possible, so please keep an eye on the channel. I think low-cost options are a great thing for all of us. Here's a super secret thing you can do to gain a huge advantage, but it will take a bit of time to master. Switching aim and fire to the shoulder buttons and off the triggers. So on a PS4 that's R2 to R1, L2 to L1. It's hidden in plain sight, simply press square on any layout you want and the shoulder buttons and triggers will switch places. It sounds wrong on so many levels, doesn't it? But here's the science. The triggers take a little bit longer to press down than the buttons do. So by switching these, you can gain a split second edge in a gunfight. It could be the difference between dying and living. So it depends how try hard you want to be. FYI, once you've made this change in this game, it's so difficult to switch back to other games. So remember, you can change this setting permanently on your console's base settings. Look for accessibility and in there, you'll be able to switch any button around you like. There's actually a version of this control system in Call of Duty Warzone right now. The closest setting to replicate both of these points are the bumper jumper tactical flipped preset mouthful. But once again, it will take even longer to learn. There's pros and cons to everything here. Aim and fire are moved forward to the front buttons, whereas jump is now mapped to the left trigger, L2, and crouch is on the thumbstick. This means with practice you'll get the advantage of instant fire, the advantage of jumping without taking your thumb off the sticks, and the advantage of slide shooting without moving your thumb also. This is god tier. But oh my word, it's hard to learn. I gave up and went back to using paddles. I'm a sellout. Let's get back to the melee fights we were speaking of, especially in the Gulag. Here's a great quick tip. Turn off your controller vibration. Getting fisted in the prison is one of the most annoying things ever, especially when the vibration is on. So turn that off. It will also calm you down before your Gulag fight. It also has real in-game ramifications too. The rumble function, yeah, it's a great way to feel part of the game. But the problem is, during that buzz in your hands, you are impacted, making aiming and shooting harder. You're fighting uncontrollable movement. So get that switched off to regain your composure. And also, the rumble function is being investigated as a contributor to arm vibration syndrome and you definitely don't want to get that. No proven truth just yet though so don't jump to any conclusions. Another setting you should consider is the auto move forward. I personally do not use this but I can see the benefits of letting you see it for yourself. Just like in many games, auto move asks you to press in the direction you'd like to go twice in quick succession. Then the controller will take over and continue your momentum. I don't like this because I accidentally use it too often and just walk away from my cover. But you should know this, whilst auto running with your squad, you can look at your items in your inventory knowing that you're always pushing forward. You can drop items for your friends or just check what ammo you need. If you play with friends, auto run is very useful, but it's definitely not for everyone. Call of Duty Warzone can be a very dark game, which is quite great at times. I've been playing around with the color blindness modes and got to admit, to add extra vivid colors to the game, I recommend Ultranopia, or whatever the hell it's called. It's not just for people with colorblind deficiencies. Just look how much the world pops with this. Maybe I've been playing Fortnite for too long and prefer vibrant colors over beige and gray. It's just a suggestion, but if you're thinking why in some of these videos it looks more vibrant, that's the reason. 
At this point I had planned to give you a definitive answer on the audio settings you should use in Warzone, but I'll be straight to it, I can't decide which is best yet. It's not great when you compare it to something like Apex Legends, so don't expect the same clarity and directional intel here. But here's what i figured out thus far. When using headphones, choose one of the boost options. Low frequency is superior for hearing footsteps, if you're the kind of player who prioritises that above all else, and the boost high setting will give you a superior mix in general, as well as keeping those footsteps pretty loud in the audio mix. A general tip here is to completely ditch the music audio as it's a distraction and another tip is to lower the dialogue volume slightly around 20%. By doing this you'll still be able to hear the announcer who gives you a heads up on UAVs and that sort of thing but it won't interfere with the most important section of all, the in-game sound, the bullets, the footsteps, the vehicles, the effect volume is king here. And for those who are always interested in sensitivity of other players, let's break it down now. By default, our controller is set to 4-4. In the world of Call of Duty, this is the most used setting there is. That's why they call it default. But unlike many other games, Warzone has a crazy amount of differentiation. So, generalizing. 1-3 to three is classed as low sense, 4-6 to six is medium sense, and 7 and above is high sense, and there's even one called insane. <laughs> I'd love to know if you can win a game with that. My personal setting is 5-5, slap in the middle of the sensitivity. Here's a note though, if I only played Warzone and nothing else, I'm sure my setting would be 7-7 or maybe higher by now, because muscle memory kicks in and the finesse of your thumbs is increased the more you play a certain type of game. But I'm not a guy who can do that, so I'll stick right in the middle. Here's the pros and cons really quickly. Low sensitivity is all about bigger movements with your thumbs. It's primarily for heavy handed people or if you play in a very cold room, low sensitivity is for you. The benefits are accuracy at range. It's extremely easy to track anyone at range with a low sensitivity. But here's the negative point. You'll be very easy to hit when you're trying to maneuver around the level. Not your running speed, that will be the same. But when you move left and right and try to weave and duck, you won't do it at the same speed as a high sense player. On the flip side of that, let's look at those high sense players. These guys use tiny thumb movements to make huge changes on screen. On the plus side, they can dodge bullets, they can move that quickly snaking around. And up close and personal, they can hit so many shots. When it comes to distance though, people on high senses usually struggle to hit shots at distance. Which leads me to ADS sense, so this is your aiming down sight. Regardless of if you play low, medium or high sense, you can micromanage your sensitivity when aiming. For example, you'll regularly see a high sense player with an incredibly low ADS sense to combat their ranged issues and they'll tend to hip fire when close up. So as a starting point, I recommend staying in medium sensitivity and looking to slowly progress to higher sensitivity. The pros definitely outweigh the cons. So adjust yourself over time if you can. Try and get that number a little bit higher. It's all personal preference. No one can tell you what to do, but that's a general understanding of sensitivity. I do hope that helped. Okay, we're done and dusted. Thank you very much. Hopefully that helped in some way, shape or form. If it did, a like would be appreciated. But at this point, no one ever stays till the end. If you did stay till the end, can you write, I found a Soap McTavish Easter egg. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you soon.